It's a fine day to be by the ocean, Ray. It is. But what are we looking for here in New Haven Harbor in Connecticut? Ray, keep your eyes peeled out there on the water and in the air because we're looking for a ghost ship. I'm Jeff Belanger. And I'm Ray Osher. And welcome to episode 43 of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. Ray, since last year, we've been on a mission to document every legend in New England, one week and one story at a time. For the last 43 weeks in a row, wow! I know, we've been sharing tales of the bazaar from all over the northeastern United States. The response has been amazing, but to keep it going and growing, we're looking for a little help. Now listen, you can become a patron on our Patreon page. Just go to patreon.com slash New England Legends and help us out. For as little as three bucks a month, you can get access to bonus podcasts that no one else can hear. Join our super secret Facebook group. And then basically, we're working for you. That's true. And thank you to all the patrons who've joined us so far. We appreciate your help with our hosting and production costs. All right, Jeff. New Haven Harbor. I'm watching the horizon for a ghost ship, but it seems to me we've kind of done this before, haven't we? We have. It was back on episode 29. We explored the Palatine Light ah. on the coast of Block Island. But this ship in New Haven Harbor is entirely different. Witnesses have claimed to see a giant ship they first thought was sailing on the water, but then they realized it's sailing in the clouds. Wow, that's weird. All right, so we need to keep our eyes peeled on the water and the sky. Exactly. You know, when I think of New Haven, I can't help but think about the Doors song, Peace Frog. Remember the line in that song? Blood on the streets in the town of New Haven. Oh, man, if I close my eyes, it's like Jim Morrison's right here. Well, on December 9th, 1967, Jim Morrison of The Doors had an altercation with police backstage at the New Haven Arena. Then he goes on stage to get the crowd worked up about it and is arrested for inciting a riot. Next thing you know, a song is born. Ray, I used to live right near here in West Haven. And for me, this city's biggest legend may just be its pizza. I've been around this great big world, and by far, the best pizza I've ever had is here in New Haven. Well, I guess I know what we're doing after we find this ghost ship. Heck yeah, we're heading to Pepe's. But first, this story. You know how sometimes it's tough to trace the roots of a legend, and at best we notice the decade where it starts to circulate, but often pinpointing the start is almost impossible? Yeah, yeah. Not this time. Really? Well, this legend's been around for more than three centuries. We were able to get our hands on a letter written in 1702 by Reverend James Pierpont to Cotton Mather. The Cotton Mather? Yeah. The Salem Witch Trials Cotton Mather. That's the one. Well, what happened? In 1702, Cotton Mather published a book called Magnelia Christi Americana, which was a history of early New England's religious development. By that year, Cotton Mather had already heard stories about a ghostly ship that was seen in New Haven Harbor. So he wrote a letter to Reverend Pierpont of New Haven asking for an account of the story. Reverend Pierpont wrote him back. Reverend and dear sir, in compliance with your desires, I now give you the relation of that apparition of a ship in the air, which I have received from the most credible, judicious, and curious surviving observers of it. In the year 1647, besides much other lading, a far more rich treasure of passengers, five or six of which were persons of chief note and worth in New Haven, put themselves on board a new ship, built at Rhode Island of about 150 tons, but so walty that the master, Lamberton, often said she would prove their grave. Reverend Pierpont goes on to describe this huge vessel that the very young city of New Haven was pinning its hopes and dreams on, a ship large enough to carry all of its various goods to England for sale and in return with much-needed supplies from the outside world. If I could be a word nerd here for a minute. Please do. Pierpont uses the word walty to describe this vessel. Yeah, okay. Well, what, what does that mean? In fairness, I had to look it up. <laughs> so it's a word we don't use anymore, obviously. It comes from the old English word welton, and it means to overturn, tumble, or totter. And if you're using this word to describe a sailing vessel, you are not being complimentary. No. So this ship built in Rhode Island is sailing through Long Island Sound over to New Haven, and it's listing to one side. It's now January, and the great ship is tied to the docks in New Haven, but it's struggling with the ice. Workers chisel away to free the ship from the weight of the ice and get ready for their journey back to England. With much fanfare, prayers, and tears, she sets sail. Mr. Davenport, in prayer, and with observable emphasis, used these words. Lord, if it be thy pleasure to bury these our friends in the bottom of the sea, they are thine. Save them. 
After that, the people of New Haven waited. And waited. And waited. The spring following, no tidings of these friends arrived with the ships from England. New Haven's heart began to fail her. This put the godly people on such prayer, both public and private, that the Lord would, if it was his pleasure, let them hear what he had done with their dear friends and prepare them with a suitable submission to his holy will. So basically, they knew something bad happened to their ship and their friends. If the ship reached England, one of the other ships making port in New Haven would have known about it. And the story is far from over, Jeff. When June rolled around, the people of New Haven saw a sight they'll never forget. It was witnessed by many people. The sighting gave birth to a legend. In June next ensuing, a great thunderstorm arose out of the northwest, after which, the hemisphere being serene, about an hour before sunset, a ship of like dimensions, with the aforesaid, with her canvas and colors abroad, though the wind northerly appeared in the air coming up from our harbor's mouth, which led southward from the town, seemingly with her sails filled under a fresh gale, holding her course north and continuing under observation, sailing against the wind for the space of half an hour. Now just to translate all that outdated English, Reverend Pierpont is describing a ship with full sail at its back sailing against the wind toward the harbor. Many were drawn to behold this great work of God. Yea, and the very children cried out, There's a brave ship. At length, crowding up as far as there is usually water sufficient for such a vessel, and so near some of the spectators, as that they imagined a man might hurl a stone on board her. Her main top seemed to be blown off, but left hanging in the shrouds. Then her mizzen top, then all her masting seemed blown away by the board quickly after the hulk brought on to a careen. She overset, and so vanished into a smoky cloud, which in some time dissipated, leaving, as everywhere else, a clear air. For the people of New Haven, they believed God had shown them the fate of their vessel and friends. It was the very thing they prayed for, an answer. Now, we've all seen shapes in the clouds. Of course. But this letter goes on to describe even more detail about the ship's rigging, its proportions. The witnesses are describing colors, yeah. ma- mass of the ships, and flags. Right. They believe this was their great ship that sailed in January. I mean, all of this sounds more than just like a shape of the clouds, right? I agree. This is a significant event. It's so significant that word spread all the way to Massachusetts and reached the ear of Cotton Mather, who wanted to hear more. To Mather, this sounds like a holy miracle worthy of his book. Pierpont's letter ends like this. But Mr. Davenport also in public declared this, in effect, that God had condescended for the quieting of their afflicted spirits, the extraordinary account of his sovereign disposal of those for whom so many fervent prayers were made continually. Thus I am, sir, your humble servant, James Pierpont. So we're calling this a ghost ship, and Cotton Mather is calling it a miracle. That's the long and short of it. Cotton Mather believed this was a literal answer to the prayers of the people of New Haven. Well, it seems to me that this is kind of a brutal answer. (laughs) What do you mean? Well, it's 1647. It's been six months since they've received no word on the fate of their ship. It's obvious it's sunk. I agree with that. So how does seeing a cloudy replay of a horrific tragedy help people? It's like God said, okay, I'll show you how they died. Watch this. Hold my beer. And then the children cheered and uh, it's right. weird, right? It's totally weird. And, and I agree. It's hard to comprehend in our modern mindset. But back then, something profound happened and it was witnessed by many people. I mean, according to the letter, for over half an hour. It was talked about through the colonies. They, they tried to make sense of it. But when something happens that doesn't fit into your worldview, you reach into those primal parts of yourself. And often... That's where your religious background resides. Well, I still don't like it, Jeff. Maybe they saw a ghost ship, and maybe they had to interpret that as best they could. The thing is, the legend lives on. There's other sightings of this ship in the folklore. The story hung around and even influenced art. Look at this. I I see that. I'm looking at a painting called Vision of the Phantom Ship, painted by Jesse Talbot in 1850. Yep. That recalls the great ship of New Haven lost in 1647. You can see this painting on our website at OurNewEnglandLegends.com. Just click on episode 43. That painting was made almost a century and a half after the story appeared in Cotton Mather's book, and two centuries after the actual event. And here we are, 371 years after the event, still talking about it. You have to admire a legend with that kind of staying power. You do. This thing hasn't died yet. It kind of makes you squint and stare a little closer out on New Haven Harbor. Man, 
The description in Pierpont's letter is just so specific. The story really does make you look twice at the horizon. And that's the power of a legend. It, it hangs around and it can change our behavior. You know, it does make me wonder, though, if maybe we should classify this as a UFO story. I mean, the ship has been seen in the air. Hmm. Hey, legendary listeners, you can text us or leave us a message anytime on our legend line. It's 617-444-9683. We got a bunch of texts this week. We got one from the 765 area code. That's central Indiana, in case you were wondering. We always welcome new friends outside of New England, of course. So welcome, central Indiana. This text just says, legends fascinate me. Smiley face emoji. <laughs> 765, they fascinate us too, don't they? <laughs> they do, but man, it's nice to hear from people a little further away, isn't it? It is. And we also got a text from the 860 area code, that's northern Connecticut. It says, is Route 66 in Connecticut haunted by a ghost driving a Harley Davidson motorcycle? The reason I ask is because my son and his friend were out driving last night and they saw a bright light behind them. The car windows were open and there was no sound. When they reached the top of the hill on the road, one of them turned around and the motorcycle had disappeared. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So we looked and we didn't find any record of a ghostly motorcycle, no. but we can't be everywhere at once. So if this story rings a bell with you, please get in touch with us. You can call us or text us or contact us through our website at OurNewEnglandLegends.com. We'd like to thank Michael Leggy for lending his voice acting talents again this week. And our theme music is by John Judd. Until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think. All right, Jeff, can we go get some New Haven pizza now? Yeah. Okay.